it's video number four, my top five of the five things of 2014. Boom. So we're talking books, all right? And some of these books might not actually have been released in 2014, but they're books that I enjoyed the most and I remember the most in this year, all right? So whatever. Number one is the Neil Asher Owner series. Now this one, the third one and the final in the trilogy released in 2014. So it's kind of technically qualifies as 2014. Um, if you haven't read Neil Asher, super, super, super violent, nihilistic science fiction. I have read a lot of his books and um, always when I want something dark and like real like, ooh, humanity sucks. This is the guy who I read. If you read the Takashi Kovacs novels by Richard Morgan or um, any of those really dark sort of cyberpunk slash um, sci-fi uh, uh, series, this is a super powered human in a very crowded, horrible, horrible future world that you could totally see happening and how it becomes so much more horrible and uh, he becomes so much more powerful. And there's some great characters in it besides him, a lot of uh, female characters who are crazy and really good and crazy and evil and just really, really awesome. You will be scared for humanity after you read this um, because it is so vividly written. Highly recommended. Number two is Ancillary Sword number two. This is the second in a series, and I know that, I mean, that's 2014, whatever. The first in the book in the series, fantastic. I won the Hugo Award this year, I believe, the first book in the series, and it's a sci-fi book that really has amazing characters that you uh, don't sort of glaze over with the science situation. Sometimes I try to read big epic sci-fi and I'm just like, who da what da, da, what fusion drive? The great thing about Ancillary Sword and the interesting thing about it is that the main character is um, sort of a clone. So she used to be like 400 of her. And then the book is about the single living one after a disaster and trying to uncover what happens, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and she doesn't really have a gender. So the first book has a little bit of a confusing factor if you don't, you know, if you don't get that when you go in, but you sort of, you, you get your training wheels off and it's fine. The second book is um, even more streamlined in that respect. And it's about her sort of furthering her adventure, being a new, you know, having a new ship, sort of uh, navigating the world of huma humans and all, at the same time, uh, uncovering a mystery. So it's a great mystery sci-fi character piece. Number three is one that I recommended, I believe on Facebook, it's called The Filter Bubble. Now, this is a book that made me think the most of the year. I always co approach the internet as like an idyllic paradise where we all can be just be free and, and connect with everybody. This is like the depressing side of that. It's all about how the construction of the internet sort of radicalizes us in a sense, even unknowingly, because it, in order to, sort of advertised to us, they construct sort of a bubble around us on the internet and how we have to make efforts to prevent that from happening and also expand our world or we tend to just become stereotyped by the very programming that we think frees us. Definitely makes you sound smart at a cocktail party <laughs> if you bring up the issues. Um, I would definitely say thumbs up. Number four is, uh, it was kind of a tie between two sequels of two different series I love. There was number four in the Alex Veris series that is a very Jim Butcher-like um, Harry Dresden series about a, um, a wizard, a magician, who lives in modern day London. It's also the Kate Daniels series, I think it's like number 20, no, I'm, I think it's number 12 or something, but it's kind of the conclusion of the series as it is now, although it'll keep continuing. And Kate Daniels is one of my very, very favorite urban fantasy romance uh, series. She's a kick-ass sort of woman in the Buffy vein and her history and all the werewolves that are around her, like it's very high quality writing. And if you're gonna dive into that sort of genre, this is definitely the number one series that you could try to check out. My last favorite book of 2014 is called Syllabus, um, Notes from an Accidental Professor, I think by Linda Berry. And this is a very weird book. It's not for everybody, but if you're into creativity of any kind, whether it's drawing or writing or filmmaking or whatever, this is a fantastic book. It's designed like a syllabus notebook. And this woman has taught a creativity class for like, I don't know, 40 years or something. And this is kind of the compilation of all her notes and thoughts and uh, inspirational thinking about creativity and writing and drawing and tapping into the unconscious. It's a fantastic gift um, or just a resource for tapping into your creativity or just looking at it in a different way. Um, all right, those are my top five books. 
And um, my last video will be the next one, which is television shows. I mean, that'll be quick, but I'm sure we'll all have opinions about that. See you there.